So they asked him. Remember who this said? This man or his parents that he was born blind? So here in the law it says in Exodus 20 and 5 it says thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Anything that could be made that's tangible that the eyes can see. Nor serve them. For I the most high thy power am a jealous power. Remember we read in Exodus 34 and 14 say his name is jealous. He's a jealous power. Busy the iniquity, the wickedness of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. So you got go back three or four generations of the fathers that hate the Most High, hated the Most High, didn't know the Most High, didn't care about learning about him upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. That's why they were saying, who did sin? This man that he was born blind or his parents? And showing mercy to thousands of them that love me. And the only way you love them is do what? And keep my commandments. You see? So that's what you're looking at when they, the disciples are asking the Mashiach of Shai, who did sin? They sin that because of the fact that he was born blind. Did he sin? Or his parents? That's what I say. Third, three to four generations. Going down to... Going back to your great grand grandfather. Going back to St. John the ninth chapter. Verse 2 it says, And his disciples asked him, This man born blind, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? My servants answered, Neither hath this man sinned. So if this man sinned, it had to be in the prior life. It had to be in the prior life. That neither this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of the Most High should be made manifest in him. You just saw me? That's like, hey, you born blind, and you're dealing with some ailment, and it's because the Most High can show up and show out just for you. You see? But you don't think about that. We just think about. Whatever it is that happened, is happened coincidentally or whatever, but the most I have his hand in it. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. That's the most high. He said, I'm going to work the works of the most high that sent him to this earth while it is day. He's day because he's that life. He's that light that's shining in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Ignorant people are not going to comprehend this. The night cometh, like we in now, gross darkness. Isn't night dark? The night cometh just in the gross darkness of the people's minds as it is today when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, he said, I am the light of the world. <laughs> and when he has thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man in the, with the clay and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam which is by interpretation sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sin. So I say, hey, nothing impossible with the Most High. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat in bed? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him, look like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? How you could see again? Well, how you could see? Because you're born blind. So how can you see? He answered and said, A man that is called Yahushai made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? Where he at? He said, I know not. I don't know where he's at. He said, I don't know where he's at. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when the Master made the clay. You see, he was doing great things on the Sabbath day and opened his eyes. 
Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He was healed, y'all. He said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of the most high because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? See? So that's a division between them. And there was, there, there it is. And there was a division among them. Because some saying, hey, knowing this man been blind all his life. And now he come back seeing. And they got a problem because it's on the Sabbath day. Technical and out of order. They say unto the blind man again, what says thou of him? That he have opened thine eyes. He said he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him. That he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. Called his parents to him. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? Parents wasn't there. How would they know? But here they go. His parents answered them and said, We know not that this is our son. I say, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he now see it, how he see it? We know not, we don't know. Or who have opened his eyes? They wasn't there. We know not. They wasn't there when this happened. He is of age. Ask of him. He shall speak for himself. So they say, hey, he of age. He's a grown man. Ask him, he can speak for himself. These words make his parents listen. Why do they speak like that to the Pharisees? Because they feared the Jews. They feared these Pharisees. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Mashiach, not Yahweh or who y'all call Jesus, this is very important. Any man, anybody confess that he was the Messiah, the anointed one, the Hamashiach. He should be put out of the synagogue. You see? They already said, anybody say he's a Mashiach, could be thrown out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give the most high the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, they call him much like a sinner. For healing this man that was born blind, allowing him to see. And why they call him a sinner? Because he did it on the Sabbath day. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. He said, hey, I know that I was blind all my life. And I know what he told me to do. On the Sabbath day, I can see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How open he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. That's what I say. When you look at people that really come at you this way, that way, whatever, make sure you come at the ones that, that's questioning you or dealing with you in a certain way this way. He said, I told you already. You ain't hear me? Will ye also be his disciples? <laughs> you know that cuddle. You gonna be his disciples? This is the Pharisees who was afraid when it tells you in, they were afraid of losing their power with the Romans. Look, uh, John 11 and 47. They was down with the system. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees, same ones going against them. Talking stuff to this man, saying I'm not a sinner for healing a man on the Sabbath day that couldn't see ever in his life. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees, same ones, a council and said, What do we? But this man talking about I'm not of a do with many miracles. That's, that's a miracle right there. If we let him thus alone, if we leave him alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans so-called white man, so-called Italian Caucasian, who was a superpower of the earth at that time, 
shall come and take away both our place and nation. Hear that? They were afraid of the Romans coming and taking away their place, men over the people and nation. And they did. In 70 AD, completely. That's why I say that man of sin got to be revealed. Gonna come a falling away. That falling away was when we fell in 70 AD. So, this is what it says. Verse 30 of St. John. Uh, now, let's look at verse 28. Then they reviled him. The Pharisee reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. See that? They all about the law. Sound familiar? You got those that are Israelites now. They're about Moses. they Moses' disciples today. They only believe in the law. You know, Old Testament and so forth. But Moses, by the law. And not really knowing the law. That's why my Shai came back and showed us, hey man, come on. You can do good on the Sabbath. We know that the most high speaking to Moses, as for this fella, talking about the Shai, we know not from whence he is. We don't know where he come from. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath open mind eyes. Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners. You hear that? Because a lot of y'all say, and y'all think in y'all mind, that the Most High hate the sin, but he loved the sinner. Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners. So if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing according to what the word of the Most High says, then he ain't hearing you. Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners those that break the laws of the Most High. He got order in this world. He got his own program that's set up. And then you coming in and can't deviate from his program that's already set up. The Most High here, if not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of the Most High and do of his will, him he heareth. That's why he gave us rules and regulations to go by. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of the Most High, he could do nothing. They answered, said unto him, Thou was altogether, thou was altogether born in sins. You see that? See so these afflictions and all the things that you're dealing with is sin. Born in sins. And does thou, that's why Master was saying, he, he healed him. And it would heal somebody say, sin no more. That's the worst thing could come upon you. Then what you're dealing with in your illness or your sickness or your, your, your um, infirmities. They asked him and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins. And does thou teach us? And they cast him out. Get on out of my face. Masha said, heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of the Most High? He asked and said, Who is he? Master. See, they put that there instead of like verse 2, it's saying, Master. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master. So they, they didn't put L O R D there. They put it here, though. It should be there. Because they put that in there. Which I showed you is B A A L means what? L O R D. Take it or leave it. And he said, Master, I believe. And he worshiped him. And the Master of Christ said, For judgment I came, for judgment I am coming to the world that they would see not might see, and that they would see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with them heard these. Words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Much of us I said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Because what he said, You exposed, man, to what you're doing that's wrong. Why he kept doing things and doing great things on the Sabbath day? To show us that 
these miracles can be done on the Sabbath day. And those that are so critical, you got examples to look at. Who are these people that have a problem with you healing somebody and doing what you're supposed to do as Mashiach of Shai just did on the Sabbath day? But you have those that's going to be the same spirits that's coming back here now. Feeling that you wrong and doing what's right to help someone and helping them come out of their infirmity. I got a, another uh, <clears throat> scriptures I want to go into pertaining to, because we're looking at health and healing. Another example of uh, healing through um, music. Go to First uh, Samuel. The right music, though. <laughs> First Samuel, sixteenth chapter, and the fourteenth verse. First Samuel 16 and 14. But the spirit of the Most High departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Most High troubled him. You see? So the spirit of the Most High departed from Saul, and an evil spirit up from the Most High troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from the Most High troubleth thee. You see? He acknowledging that this evil spirit came from the Most High. He said, let our master now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp. Hear that? That can play the harp like the piano. Now, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from the Most High is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Music. From playing this harp. It shall come to pass. When you playing this instrument. This harp. Which the piano is like a harp. With keys on it. And thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants. Provide me now a man that can play well. And bring him to me. Right? Find somebody who can play this harp. And that could play well and bring them to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Beth Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain. This is King David. This is David. And a mighty valiant man, a man of war, imputed in matters. And of a comely person. Handsome he said. And the most high is with him. Wherefore Saul. This is David. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse. And said send me David thy son. Which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread. And a bottle of wine. And a kid. A goat. Young goat. And sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And he began, he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. So let David stay with me. Because he found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from the Most High was upon Saul, since the Most High was with David, and David took in heart and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. That's deep. So music has power too. Depending on what kind of music you're going to listen to, though. You know, some music you listen to, hey, bring about demons. <laughs> And some music, hey, you play it, and like he say, Saul was refreshed. You get refreshed, and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. 
some of this music they playing rock music and some of the music that they just rap music they play it and bring about evil spirits. So it works both ways. First Chronicles 15. First Chronicles, the 15th chapter. And verse 16. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalmsteries, and harps, and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. For the Levites appointed Hermon, the son of Joel, and of his brethren, Asaph. A lot of the, a lot of the psalms are, you know, it'll say Asaph at, at the top of the uh, chapters. The son of Berashiah and the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Keshah, and with them, their brethren in the second degree. Going down, telling you all the you know, the singers and those that were musicians and so forth. And a lot of times we would have the trumpets that would go out before us in war and so forth, playing. Listen, verse 27, and David was clothed with a robe of fine linen and all the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant and the singers and Shenaniah, the master of the song with the singers, David also had upon him an ephod of linen. You see? Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Most High with shouting and with sound of the cornet, these instruments of music, and with trumpets and with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass, as the Ark of the Covenant of the Most High came to the city of David, that Michal, the daughter of Saul, looking out at a window, saw David, King David dancing and playing. And she despised him in her heart. So she looked out the window and seen King David dancing and playing. And she despised him in her heart. And Saul had given her to David to vex him. <laughs> First Chronicles 16 and 1. So they brought the ark of the Most High and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt offerings, burnt, excuse me, burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before the Most High. When David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Most High by Shalom Mashiach Shai. And he dealt to every and he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Most High, to record and to thank and to praise the Most High Power of Israel. You see? It's powerful. Let me look at something. Just a moment.